Welcome to ONS Energy Talk and a special welcome to you, Araceli. Hi, Inge. Thanks very much. You're working as a tech analyst in the International Energy Agency and you spend a lot of your time looking at technologies and its effects. But what is technology for you? Thanks uh, for the question. I guess uh, that, that's uh, an interesting one and a, and a difficult one at the same time. Um, I would say technology uh, for me is more like the, the means that uh, have enabled us to reach uh, better welfare and uh, better lifestyles uh, across the, the world. Um, and actually technology will be crucial uh, when we look at you know, how we need to improve the sustainability of, of our society and how we need to change uh, some of the, the, uh, the routines that we use on our daily basis. Um, for instance, technology can help us uh, greatly if we think about you know, how we can lower the environmental footprint of the way in which different services are delivered, how technology can help us also to reduce or recycle most of the materials or the goods that we consume every day, or how, how we can provide energy access and improve uh, welfare to in the, in the world. So, so yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of uh, interesting, uh, let's say, developments on the technology front that could help us uh, move uh, together as a society. So, uh, yeah, very interesting question. <laughs> Um, and building on that, I think we all agree that the target is is, is clear. We need to uh, deliver on the huge climate and sustain sustainability challenges. And from your perspective, in the International Energy Agency, you work to give advice to global policy makers. Uh, and, and technology is core to, to, to reach the, the agreed solutions and, and the ambitions. Elaborate on how you think technology is core to reach those goals? And what are the main challenges for, for the policymakers? Sure, uh, no, indeed. So, so I think it's key that, uh, I think it's clear that we'll need uh, a major transformation in the way we, we supply, we transform and we consume energy. And so uh, energy technology would play a, a fundamental role in that transformation. Actually, in the recent analysis that we did on this Energy Technology Perspectives 2020 report that we released in, in September, we've looked at more than 800 technologies uh, to understand what would be needed uh, from a technology standpoint to reach that transformation uh, at the global level. And uh, in a way, we, we saw really that there's many technologies out there already in markets that can make a very big contribution uh, in, that, in that effort. But uh, the bad news, in a way, uh, or a bit the challenge ahead of us, is that uh, unfortunately not all of these technologies are market ready. And so there's particular technology areas such as hydrogen, electrification, uh, different uses of bioenergy or integrated carbon capture and storage that uh, would require uh, certainly innovation efforts to make sure that all the steps across the value chains particularly uh, when they are applying sectors where emissions are hardest to, to prevent, will be required. And so um, innovation efforts today would really uh, be the, the, the stone that we need to build to make sure that uh, that transformation in the future uh, would be possible. And, and so we estimated through that analysis that around one third of the cumulative emission reductions that will be required in such a transition to net zero emissions would come from technologies that are not available in markets today. And so, uh, hence our kind of call for more attention uh, into innovation efforts and our advice to governments to look into these aspects more carefully when they look at uh, their priorities and their uh, strategies to support the, the transition moving forward. Hmm. And, and building on that, uh, you say you, you've done a big uh, technology report this autumn and you mentioned you looked at 800 technologies uh, and we've seen major progress has been made in many energy uh, technologies looking into solar, wind, batteries and so on. But did you see any surprises when you look at this to big total amount of, of numbers? Yeah, no, indeed. Uh, so we, we really saw there's, there's some areas that have had impressive uh, progress really. Uh, when we look at uh, solar PV, as you've mentioned, I mean, some developments in wind to uh, electric mobility, particularly for, for passenger cars or developments on the cost and the designs of batteries uh, to support this. Uh, and so we've seen, you know, this, this growing momentum. And I think this, this is a good reasons for optimism when it comes to clean energy technology development uh, and how they are uh, being introduced in markets and how they are rolling, being rolled out. 
Um, so, so this again uh, was the, the first kind of you know part of, of our analysis. But indeed, uh, when we look deeper at what were the implications really of reaching net zero emissions, which was which is basically the, the uh, momentum and the, the type of pledges that governments, an increasing number of governments, but also corporates, uh, are uh, putting out there. Um, the uh, role of technology uh, development will be much uh, much larger than that. Uh, so we require much many many more efforts across the whole energy system beyond what these specific technologies that are progressing and advancing well can deliver. And so uh, for us. In a way, the, the slight surprise uh, was that there, there was this disconnect when we explored this in more detail across this detailed analysis that I mentioned of more than 100 technologies. So there was this kind of disconnect between the growing momentum on, uh, let's say, uh, uh, international uh, uh, climate uh, pledges and targets versus the, the current state of play of clean energy technology development when we look at, at it from the whole perspective of the energy energy system. Talking about net zero emissions, there's a growing numbers of uh, governments uh, pledging to, to reach those ambitions. Uh, and this demands that the whole energy system is actually altered. What, what is uh, infrastructure's role into this? Sure. Well, indeed, I mean, infrastructure is critical uh, to, to this transition. And we've looked at this from, from two dimensions. I mean, on this challenge of reaching net zero emissions. The first one is when we think about the existing infrastructure. So how to manage emissions that will come in from this existing infrastructure. And particularly when we think that um, most of the uh, existing assets, particularly those related to power generation or uh, heavy industries have been recently, uh, let's say, uh, put online, uh, particularly in Asian countries. And at the same time, they are typically uh, long lived. So we've, we've estimated uh, in our analysis that if all existing assets uh, across the whole uh, energy system would continue operating under current conditions until the end of their typical lifetimes, around 750 gigatons of CO2 emissions would be emitted over the next 50 years. So this means that, of course, uh, those emissions would be essential to be tackled because otherwise those emissions would be uh, exhausting most of the uh, CO2 emissions budget that IPCC uh, has indicated that could be compatible uh, with uh, limiting the global temperature rise to uh, well below two degrees. So again, very important to understand which strategies can be put in place, either through retrofits, through uh, integrating carbon capture storage, through early retirement to make sure that we can tackle those emissions. The second perspective or aspect related to infrastructure, which is uh, critical for this transformation, is the rollout of all uh, uh, enabling uh, new infrastructure that we uh, needed. When we think about you know, how um, different uh, clean energy technologies would be uh, developed uh, or deployed in markets, if we think about strengthening uh, or reinforcing and expanding the distribution grids for electricity, adding more flexibility into the systems, but also rolling out uh, infrastructure to, to transport, to distribute, uh, stored hydrogen, um, but also, for instance, all the infrastructure related to the transportation storage of CO2. So there's many technologies uh, that would be critical to reach net zero emissions that would require such uh, enabling infrastructure. Unfortunately, they are not kind of plug and play technologies that can be integrated directly in existing uh, systems. And so this uh, major uh, rollout of infrastructure would be, would be also critical. And we've provided in the report also particular numbers of you know, what this would imply uh, in tangible terms uh, from now to 2050, so that governments have an understanding of, you know, of the efforts in terms of uh, investments and rollout strategies that need to be put. I hear you saying we need both to tackle kind of the existing infrastructure, but also putting new innovative uh, technology into the infrastructure picture. Uh, if we if we park that for a bit, and I'll I'll just ask you about what are the technologies that makes you most optimistic when it comes to clean energy technologies? Is it solar? Is it is it wind? Or is it is it or is it more the totality of the development that you're seeing right now? Yeah, I wouldn't pick necessarily a, a unique technology uh, most because uh, first we've seen uh, it was very obvious in, in our analysis that not one single technology or one single actual sector uh, would deliver you know the, the overall effort that is required. 
There's, of course, some technologies that have more synergies and kind of uh, benefits across the whole system. And so uh, in terms of the kind of technology families or strategies, I mean, electrification is, is a central pillar in the transformation that we see to reach net zero emissions. It, it accounts for around 20% of the cumulative emission reductions in our sustainable development scenario um, to reach that, that goal. And, and so there's a lot of you know, weight put on that. And that strategy can help us uh, alleviate a lot of emissions. Uh, but one of the uh, aspects that we've seen is that um, despite the, you know, the, the optimism when we look at, you know, the, the developments that we are seeing and the, the progress in solar PV, as you've mentioned over the last decade, this, you know, fantastic cost reductions, uh, we still uh, see and wanted to highlight that uh, electricity by itself won't be able to, you know, decarbonize full economies or the decarbonization of the power sector by itself won't be able to, to deliver net zero emissions. There's a lot of many more technologies that will be required and other strategies in other sectors, particularly on the demand side. And that goes beyond electrification. And, and this is where innovation actually is, is more needed. These are the areas, if we think about hydrogen, application of hydrogen or hydrogen related fuels, carbon capture and storage or bioenergy. Those are technology areas in which less, let's say, uh, commercially available technology or applications uh, are there particularly in, in some specific sectors uh, such as long distance transport and heavy industries. And so I would put more the emphasis in there. I think I'm optimistic in the sense there's been a lot of momentum, a lot of good uh, pilot demonstration projects in there, uh, more momentum from corporates and governments to put more attention into these areas. But still this kind of reshifting of priorities is starting and we need to see how this materializes in terms of uh, implementation on those specific projects and we see uh, hopefully how this technology starts reaching markets and being rolled out in, in the specific uh, infrastructures needed. In your report you say that uh, spreading the use of electricity is uh, into more parts of the economy is the single most important reason uh, contribute to reaching a net zero emission but it, electricity cannot do it alone. If you're going to sum up the report in uh, three brief points, what are the most important things that you will highlight? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we, we've made this effort of trying to synthesize what were the key, uh, the key aspects to bring to the attention of governments and decision makers. And we focus in our, our uh, messages in, in three blocks. Uh, the first one is about not forgetting existing infrastructure, as I've mentioned before. Uh, this is uh, sometimes uh, a bit overlooked and uh, there's a lot of more attention put on, you know, what new technologies will be required and how to roll them out, but not how to manage the emissions from the existing assets. And so that's a part that will be very important uh, for the GS to come to tackle. The second aspect um, was about connecting again uh, to with this uh, kind of, uh, let's say, recent progress that we've seen uh, in terms of renewables in terms of integrating electricity in different areas, such as, for instance, electric mobility, particularly for, for passenger cars. Uh, there's been supportive, uh, let's say, uh, efforts uh, from different governments uh, on, around those technologies from the R&D uh, side, so on the development phase and also on the deployment phase. And we are seeing now the results on how these technologies are entering into markets and are, you know, getting uh, rolled out at a, at a good pace. Um, However, this, this is uh, bringing us a lot of reasons for optimism, as I've, as I've mentioned before. And, uh, and we've seen how you know, the attention put there has, uh, is starting to produce its, its kind of results. But at the same time, we wanted to bring the attention that focusing on those areas wouldn't be enough to reach net zero emissions. And so we need to start shifting the attention and the efforts towards demand sectors, particularly those to, which are hard to abate such as long distance transport and heavy industries so that we make sure that technologies would be, uh, would be required, would be ready. And this brings me to the third block, which is about clean energy innovation. I, in our analysis, it was, it was clear that without clean energy innovation, the emissions wouldn't be possible to, would be rich, we won't be possible to, to meet that goal. And, and so again, when we look at how uh, innovation efforts or in particular R&D uh, spending and uh, stimulus have been, uh, let's say, prioritized in the past. There's been a lot of focus on low carbon electricity technologies, on uh, energy efficiency. 
actually this uh, the, the R&D spending from governments in these areas is three times more than the one that is uh, related to hydrogen technologies, direct electrification of end uses, carbon capture and storage, and bioenergy. And actually those four are the areas that require more. So we were also making a call for reprioritizing and expanding those uh, innovation support efforts so that we can make sure that those technologies will be ready uh, to be uh, introduced in markets as soon as possible uh, so that we could really meet the, the goals we are we have set for ourselves. Reaching the uh, energy and climate uh, goals demands a uh, dramatic scale of, of clean energy technologies. Araceli, thank you much. Thank you very much for, for talking us through this. And thank you very much for participating. And thank you to our listeners. It was a great pleasure. Thanks very much.